In this video, we're working on a D8 dozer. What are we working on? Well, the 3406 that's inside of it is consuming lots of oil. Why is it doing that? Well, that's the point of this video. We're trying to pull the cylinder head and maybe find out what's going on. Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel, and today we've got a piece of equipment. Well, technically a 3400 series engine in a D8, which is a bulldozer. It's also the middle of April, which explains why it's both sunny outside and snowing. Also makes a lot of sense. What we're gonna be doing is apparently this has some oil consumption and I have been instructed to remove the cylinder head. So that's what we're gonna go do. So let's get to work. So this is our D8 dozer here. You can see the mechanic that put the tracks on also removed the engine cover there. So thank you for doing that. And you can see, yeah, it does have new tracks. It has new undercarriage components on it. And this has a 3406B, which very similar to 3406B truck engines that I've worked on, luckily. And like I said, it's consuming oil. And this is a Reman Cat engine. It's only two years old. So why is it consuming oil? Well, that's why we've been instructed to pull the cylinder head to find out. The turbocharger had already been inspected. All the minor stuff, such as looking for large leaks and things have been checked out by field mechanics. So main thing I noticed while working on this D8 is it is much harder to work on this engine than it is in a truck application, which may seem obvious, but it may not at first. So the first is you are not standing next to the engine. You are basically standing on top of the engine. The engine is basically at your foot level, so it makes it difficult to get the items. Now we do need to pull the rocker shaft off. We need to pull the fuel lines off. We need to pull the thermostat jumper off. So that's what we did just there. And we're going to cap these fuel lines and the injector, well, nozzles, not technically injectors. But before we do that, I want to get most of this dirt off before I start rummaging around. And I'd already vacuumed around the valve covers and stuff that I could, but with the valve cover bases on, it was pretty difficult. So we're just trying to clean up as much dirt as possible and just keep it as clean as possible. Because like I said, this engine's actually only two years old. And even if it was older, you just don't want to get any dirt into this engine, especially this one because it's a push rod engine so if you push dirt in there it's not going in the pan it's going on the camshaft now like i said this is way more difficult than a truck because not only are you not standing next to the engine you're basically standing on top of it there's nowhere to really stand or anything you're kind of leaning over on the tracks which tracks are not the softest things to be basically kneeling over the entire time but someone's got to do it so we're gonna see if my electric Milwaukee will take these head bolts out. This is a three quarter drive and we're using the cat head bolt socket. We got a nine amp hour battery on it. So let's see if it'll take them off. Got our cat socket and it's a three quarter 12 point headed. Same socket you would use on the C15s. And I actually like this camera angle here because you're basically seeing exactly what I'm seeing as I'm doing it. So this would be first person mechanic angle. I'm not sure what, what you would call that, but they use the head bolts, three head bolts that hold down the rocker pedestals. If you've ever worked on a C15, you know they changed that design. And these are also push rod engines opposed to the later C15s, which were overhead cam. Or I guess technically in head cam, but Pretty much the same thing. So once you take these off, you can then get the other head bolts out. We ended up, I was trying to leave that intake manifold on. You can see on the, the top side of the screen here, but could not because the it has smaller head bolts that are basically under that. Uh, probably possible, but it was easier just to take it off. Let's do some destruction of the week. Before I play this video that was sent to me, this is almost more of a question of the week because I don't know what's going on here. You'll see what's going on, but yeah. what would be causing it? I have not seen this before. Yeah, that's engine oil or what it appears to be engine oil, but what it's coming out of is the fuel return line out of the cylinder head. So the only thing I could think of on this truck at C15 is the heads possibly cracked and somehow engine oil's getting into the fuel, but 
If you've seen this symptom before, please leave a comment. At, uh, the guy was asking me about it, and I hadn't seen that before. The next one we've got is from Australia, and it's a Hitachi big old EX1200 pinion. And this thing was about the size of a man that that gear was, so said so that was pretty expensive. We've got a Detroit water pump gear here, and that water pump gear is pretty much totally destroyed. Apparently this also took out the cam gear, which I didn't get pictures of that, but pretty bad. Thanks for the pictures. So once we got those head bolts and the rocker shaft out, you can see the fuel lines there real quick too. Look at the size of these head bolts. I mean, not, not the, they're the same size as the C15 as far as the thread, but the length on these ones that hold the rockers in. I think these are the longest head bolts I've pulled out of a smaller range. I have worked on the 3500s, but I don't, I don't remember if those even have longer head bolts. They are over 12 inches long. Those are pretty long. We're going to say 12 and an eighth there. So yeah, that's uh, pretty good. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be run over by a D8, well, this is kind of what you would probably see. This is the undercarriage here. You can see pretty much all new components there, except for the, the I believe they're called track frames. Not, a, not an equipment expert here, folks. Look, these belly pans are enormous. They, I both, they could probably hold up the D8, I don't know, but this little port, which I'm trying to take off, is apparently where the oil drain is. And here's one major problem with working on equipment if the belly pans are still on. If you drop a bolt, a washer, a socket, or let's say theoretically the AC compressor bracket, which may or may not be why I'm trying to remove this, you have to go way under the machine, and if the belly pan's not down, you have to hope and pray that you can get this panel off and that it's behind here. And theoretically, if my assistant, who was working on the other side of the engine, were to drop, let's say, a stubby wrench behind here, not behind here, but actually the, the belly pan to the rear, you would really not be having a good day. These are, I understand why they're there, but man, they does not make getting to the bottom side of this engine very easy. So we were able to get all the parts off. We used the engine lifting brackets to lift this head off. Those are really big brackets, by the way. Kind of ridiculous, but looks pretty good from what I could see underneath. No, no damage to the valves. Of course, you have carbon buildup. I'd say a little bit more than I was expecting on a not so old engine. And we're looking at the cylinders because remember, oil consumption, folks. So I was expecting to find something wrong with a cylinder pack. Maybe a broken ring, maybe bad crosshatch, heavy glazing, something like that, but I don't actually see anything. There are a couple little lines, which is fairly normal, nothing you could even feel. The carbon rings are weird. They are quite big, but these use aluminum pistons, and according to SIS, the ring is kind of in the center of the piston, so that would explain why the carbon rings on the top of the liner are larger than what I'm used to seeing. So I was told to pull the exhaust manifold off here, and that's what I did. So what we're looking for is any sign of excessive oil in one of the exhaust ports. We're also going to be looking at the intake ports, but exhaust ports looked pretty clean. They all looked uniformly sooted with no sign of oil. So intake, let's look at the intake. They are tricky to look at on these because unlike most engines where you can kind of get on them straight, these are off. So... You can see that the intake valves are wet. So they, obviously the only thing that could really be getting on there would be engine oil. And some oil residue on intake valves is not uncommon because the tops of the stem of the valve goes into the crankcase while the engine's running. And it's not always 100%. Now what is weird is these do not use any sort of valve seals. They have a valve guide but no seal. So if the engines were being run under low load, it could actually be creating a slight vacuum which would pull oil into the intake area. Now, if you don't know what a valve seal is, this is a valve seal and this is on a C15, but everything I could find, the 346B does not use them at all. So I'm not claiming this, but if the customer were to be running it at very low loads or idle a lot, it could be eating lots of oil there, but we don't know that they're doing that. I'm just mentioning it. So. I pulled the valves out, the intake valves, take a look at them. You can see our valve guides here. I don't see any excessive wear or damage to them. 
and I couldn't find any. The valves and the valve guides appear to be in good condition. Now I spent quite a bit of time researching in CAT if you can install valve seals to these to help with heavier oil consumption. And I could not find any special service letters or anything that would indicate that. Now you can't see there is quite a bit of burned oil residue on the valve. So oil has been getting on these, but is that the cause of the problem of oil consumption? Well, really no way to tell. Probably gonna be on someone way higher up in the chain on what gets done on this engine. And as far as it sits now, this is where it's gonna stay until the next video. I will leave you with this. Nothing is askew. I'd like to say a special thanks to Tony for donating at update at yahoo.com this week. Thank you to everyone who has watched these videos. And if you have any information on the other problem with the oil coming out of the fuel, please leave it in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.